Hey guys, I wanted to uh, do a little bit of video and I want to uh, talk about home server hosting. Should you do it? Should you not do it? Um, the pros and cons of doing something like this. Like I have a setup here um, that I'll show at the end of the video. Um, but I want to address this because a lot of people uh, they're like, man, you know, I like to have a server, you know, and, um, you know, getting one server or something like that, that's perfectly fine. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, you can set a server up on a regular laptop computer. I've done it before uh, using Linux, set up an Apache 2 proxy server like I have, or just a regular Apache 2 server. Um, also Windows. Uh, but the thing is, is that a normal computer is not made to to be a server, which means it's not made to be ran 24-7, there's no redundant power systems, there's no RAID, there's no multiple, you know, um, hard drives where you can split your you know, memory up and stuff, your store, your data, and there's none of these things. And it might be hard to hear you guys, and I, um, I have some of the servers off to try to, to combat that so I'm not screaming <laughs> at, at you guys. Um, so I want to talk about it because uh, there's there's a couple videos out here but there's not a whole lot so that's pretty good information. So I just kind of want to share um, my in depth on what what I personally think is the pros and cons of home server hosting. Okay. So the cons is going to be the startup. Naturally, your hardware, your servers, your uh, PDUs. Your UPSs, patch panels, um, also depends on what kind of service you're going to get. Are you going to get you know, tower servers like this one and this one, or are you going to get rack mounted servers like this one over here and this one and this uh, server cabinet? Um, that's, what, that's the second thing you're going to need to figure out. Uh, there's a big price difference in between the two, and there's there's a huge price range when it comes to buying commercial servers. Uh, to be honest with you, your best bet is going to be to try to find um, a used server, a nice used server, uh, starting off if you're just now getting into it because um, they ran, they run from, excuse me, from you know, a couple hundred bucks to thousands, um, many thousands. So that's that's one thing. Uh, heat. They produce a lot of heat, especially when you run a lot like I do. Um, my server room, which is this room, on average stays eight, seven to eight de degrees warmer than the rest of the house. So in the winter time, that's a, that's a benefit. You know, I open up the door. You know, the heat goes through goes through, and it warms other places. Uh, in the summertime, that's that's not that's not a good thing. So that's 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 second thing you're going to have to to worry about in combat. Um, so number one is going to be hardware, startup hardware servers, like I said. Number two, the cons is going to be heat. All right. Number three is going to be power. If you run a lot of servers like I do, or even one server, you're going to notice. If you run it 24-7, you are going to notice your power bill go up. There's no way around it. Um, if you're running as many watts and as much volts and amps as I'm running, um, you're going to notice your power bill go up considerably. Um, you might also, you may not be able to run all of your, your servers and your equipment in your house. That, you know, if you live in the older house with older wiring, you, you could actually run a fire hazard. Uh, running that much amps. Not to mention you'll, you'll blow your, your, every time you try to do anything or somebody else in the house tries to cut a microwave on or let's say start a uh, dishwasher, um, better yet, dryer, you know, you do, if you've got all this kind of stuff running already and you're pulling that off the, off your power grid, uh, you, you're going to flip a switch somewhere. It's just, it's just too much amps going through, 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 through the house. And it becomes a safety because most houses aren't meant to, to handle that amount of amps uh, coming in. 
So, uh, like I said, number three is going to be power. Number four, which is a kind of an emphasis, is going to be hackers or people that are um, just bent on destruction or exploiting or, or, or breaking into your systems. Um, that is that is going to be number four. That is the only commons that, that I personally see. So number one is hardware, your startup servers, you know, APCs, PDUs, UPSs, etc. Um, heat is number two. Three is power. Uh, and number four, like I said, is hackers or people that are intent on trying to break into your servers, or cause problems, or uh, DDoS you, or DDoS you, you know, distributed denial of service, or whatever. Um, pros, you can host and store your own data and websites. Uh, that that is a, that is a really good thing. That is a con. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. That is a pro. Uh, number two, you make money off of hosting other people and their websites and their material. You turn into a business. As of right now, I can host over 100,000 people. I, I, and when I say that, I'm, I'm dead serious. If you buy a legit service like I have, on average, they can handle up to about 10,000 clients at one time. And it's not a problem. Uh, as long as you have the necessary storage for that amount of information, people say that. Um, number three. It's just plain cool. It's just cool, man, to have your own server. With you. Number four, there's many other uses for this, uh, for all of this equipment and this processing power. Um, during a breakdown or WRL situation, I can turn this into my local mesh net where people can access my servers locally um, using SDR or uh, uh, using um, shortwave radio hooked up to computers. I'll be able to make a local mesh network. People can log up to my servers. And, and access uh, material that they would find on the web, but they can only access what's what's on my local servers. Uh, and there's also other other things that these servers can be used for. Um, but due to security and my safety, I'm not going to share uh, those those things because those things aren't most known people don't know about. Um, so yeah, so I hope this kind of helps. Um, if if the sound is kind of crappy, like I said, I got a bunch, I got servers running. I've got a lot of them, guys. Um, some of them are off, some of them are on, uh, but stay tuned. I'm getting kind of seven, almost eight minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys real fast what I got going on. And, uh, you know, hope you guys liked it. Let me know. Um, if I need to redo it, I'll redo it. You know, if you guys got questions, feel free to ask. So give me a second, and I'll give you a little quick, real fast. Try to do it before this dies on us. So I've got it, kind of got it in selfie mode, guys. So it's not going to be the easiest. As you can see, we've got voltage and usage running out of there. Not multiple. Yes, it's got servers down in there. Patch panel switches. All of this. Look at these got server tower here. This is a server tower here. So, it's just the routers, the power vaults. Got more rack mounted servers in here. Um, switches over, patch panels, and, and some fiber optic to uh, copper cat 6 conversions. So, that's another server cabinet I have. And so yeah guys, stay tuned and I have more to come. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, later.